Audiobook sponsored by Lunsford's Daily Sunday School. Presented by Harris Productions. Revelation Chapter 6. Verse 1. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Verse 2. I saw, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. Verse 3. When he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Verse 4. There went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Verse 5. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Verse 6. I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou heard not the oil and the wine. Verse 7. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Verse 8. I looked, and behold a pale horse, and the name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Verse 9. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. Verse 10. They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Verse 11. White robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Verse 12. I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Verse 13. The stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. Verse 14. The heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island was moved out of their places. Verse 15. The kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse 16. Said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Verse 17. The great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Good morning. It's End of Monday chapter six. Morning. We're ready to get out here and go to school and see what we can learn today. <laughs> anyway, it is good. It's good to be around young people. And, you know, um, I, I get on the school system a lot because, you know, the Bible tells us who much is given, much is uh, desired or something of that matters, which means... You know, you've been given a tremendous responsibility, and the school system has been given a tremendous responsibility, and they need to worry about more than just the kids at the top and the kids at the bottom, because it's the ones in the middle that can still go to the top, uh, or they can just give up and go to the bottom. Those are the ones we have to be watchful of. So good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Evelyn. 
we are going to kind of go sideways this morning. The footnote for today was the anti or the false prophet. But since it's going to take us over to Revelation 13, I thought we would start with uh, chapter 6, which is the seals and how that the Antichrist is going to come uh, into being, because we didn't really get into that much, and uh, we will. So, Sammy, good to see you. Evelyn, everybody, great to see you. Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We had a great ch church service yesterday, um, and, uh, you know... The thing is, there's a lot going on in the world, lots of craziness out there, but the Christian is going to live forever. And we need to really focus on that because so many people, you know, I will say to them, you know, man, I know you're going through something. You're going to live forever. And they go, you know, you know, I guess we don't sit around thinking about that. But one of the chief things that motivates me, Ike, good to see you this morning. You know, let's just think about life in general. When we think about the holidays, we like them sometimes because we get to see all the kids together. Well, when we think about whatever, you know, if you like to eat like me, let me just break it down for something real simple. Um, I think about lunch. I think about dinner. You know? <laughs> I mean, I hate to be like that. But if I don't eat breakfast or don't eat very little for breakfast and very little for lunch, then it kind of keeps my weight kind of steady, right? But we look forward to things. Why are we not looking more forward to this thing called heaven? That's the thing that's got me completely, you know. I say that to Christians all the time. You're going to live forever. And they go, wow. Yeah, I'm going to live forever. Well, that's one of the first things I realized when I got out of hell was I was going to live forever. So happy Monday, as happy as it gets, right? Stephanie Barker, good to see you today. We're going to start, and we better start. Instead of me just talking, <clears throat> we better get this lesson lined out. I'm going to back up here. The footnote this morning is Revelation 13, which talks about the false prophet, that final world leader on the religious front that pulls the, the one world order together, and he's praising the Antichrist for all the things he's doing. So we're going to get to that, hopefully, this morning. If not, we'll take a couple days. But I want to get you to Revelation chapter 6 to start this thing, because I want to show you when the church is raptured out of here, okay, and the Lamb of God, who is in heaven, opens one of the seals. This is the first of the seven seals in chapter 6, the book of Revelation. So he heard the noise of thunder, one of four beasts, saying, Come and see. Now, who's he saying this to? He's saying to John. Who was John? John was the beloved. Who was the beloved? Probably Jesus' closest friend. Peter gets a lot of press, but Jesus corrected Peter a lot. John was the youngest. And I think, like, you ever have a kid that kind of, when you played sports, you knew that kid was a fan of yours? Oh, wow. Yeah, Harvey. Harvey and Wanda. You know, it wasn't very long ago, about a year or so back, well, it might have been more now, that we were at the nursing home at the same time, and Wanda can really sing. We we sang a song, and, um, and it was for... Uh, would it be her mother, uh, Junior Clagg? Did her and Junior share a mother? Are they brother and sister? Um, I'm trying to think of how that went. But anyway, yes, we'll be praying for Harvey and, and the Foster family. If we can help in any way, let us know on that. Sandy, good to see you. Thanks for giving me the shout out in church there yesterday. And we do enjoy this Sunday school class during the day because we need a little bit of Jesus every single day to keep us on track. So speaking of on track, that's my problem. Let me jump here in Je uh, Revelation 6. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, Oakle and Junior. Yeah, that's who we were visiting was Oakle because Oakle went to Bethel Baptist when I went to Bethel. And of course, I've known Junior and Oakle all my life. And... Uh, so it was really, it was really something. That was a, a, an amazing service that day at the nursing home there, right there at Culloden. Actually, just a little bit before Culloden, but you know where I mean. So let me open this first seal for you. The Lamb of God, Jesus himself in heaven, opens this first seal. And he's, and, and, and he's talking to John. John's the beloved. John's the, the apostle that lived the longest. Um, and I'll get into some on him and James, because his brother James he was the first martyr. And if you remember, James and John's mother go go to Jesus and say, hey, 
you know, how about my son's being something important in heaven? And he says, uh, the mother says, what about one sitting on the left hand of you in heaven and one sitting on the right hand? And I picture a round table with these apostles and James was the first martyr. So if he sits down and Jesus is at the head of the table, wouldn't he be on the left hand? And if you went all the way around the table with the other 11 disciples and then added Matthias and Apostle Paul, you know, by the time you get all the way around and the last one to pass was John, isn't that kind of ironic or amazing that they both, one ends up on the left hand and one on the right if you if you look at it that way? I thought it was kind of amazing. So he says, behold, I saw a horse and he went forth to conquer and to be conquered. So this first seal is going to initiate the worldwide conquest by the false messiah. This will be done over in, in uh, Rome, a lot of people say, the revived Roman Empire, okay? And it will be a Gentile ruler. So the, the Antichrist, the final Gentile ruler of the world, talked about there in the book of Daniel, okay? Remember, there's been three great kingdoms. There'll be the fourth, the Roman kingdom was the fourth kingdom, and how they're going to be revived. Now, we can't really, the power of, of just well, of God is sovereign, but how the devil's going to resurrect Rome when, when it's really still really struggling over there in that part of the world. <clears throat> but, but, but he'll do it. So, um, he'll be the final world ruler, and we're going to get to that here in Revelation 13. But I want to quickly go through seal two, three, four, five, six. Seal two is war and lack of peace. And a lot of people look at that and say, well, we're right there now. But remember, Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're already <clears throat> at that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It would be nothing to think about. We've already got aggravation from Russia with the Ukraine, North Korea doing their missile testing, China. <clears throat> Uh, is infiltrating us through the artificial intelligence uh, and through the computers and, and through the brainwashing and things of that nature. So all this stuff is already percolating, if you will, but then it's going to come to pass, okay? Because that second seal is going to bring the war and lack of peace. Uh, the third seal is going to be inflation and famine. We get a little taste of that. We got a little taste of that with the... Uh, COVID lockdown, and we're getting a little taste of that with the price of groceries and the price of gas. It's amazing to me that we buy our fuel from other places in the country when we've got enough oil and gas um, to take care of us all. But my politicians can't get rich unless they ship something overseas and take a kickback or a bribe, because that's how they make their money. And see, they're going to have to live with that corruption in hell one day because of what they've done. So, because once again, here's a little birth pang or a little bit of something that's going on. The inflation and the famine doesn't have to, the famine's going to be what it is in the tribulation period. And the inflation, you know, maybe a loaf of milk's 20, or a loaf of milk, a gallon of milk is 20 bucks, you know, during this tribulation period. I mean, and once again, I take it back to COVID. I'm telling you right now, and you all may believe it, uh, but if you cut off, the electric during COVID, man, I bet you 25% of the population in this country would have died. And I might have been right there with them because I'm not very well prepared either. Kim, good to see you this morning. I hope everything's going all right. So where are we in this thing? So the inflation and the famine it comes in, in the third seal. Then the fourth seal. And this is something that people just don't... You're, a lot of people say, I'm just going to go through tribulation because then I'll know Jesus is real. I'll know that the church is not here, and then I'm going to pay attention. Well, let me share this seal number four with you. Now, granted, we're just hitting the high marks on this. Karen Midkiff, good to see you this morning. But seal number four brings death to a fourth of the population. Now, if we are at 10 billion people, because we're over nine now, but if we're at 10 billion people when the church leaves here and 10% of it's gods, that's going to leave 9 billion people. Now, once again, I would love to tell you we're all going to heaven and happy, you know, happy be ye go on, right? 
But the truth of the matter is, I think God made such a big deal about 10% being his in the Old Testament that even though you and I don't live by the Old Testament rules, I really believe that, that it's always been just a remnant of people. And I think you can see that. If you Google remnant, how many places are remnant? There may be in your Bible concordance. How many places is the word remnant used? And everybody's not going. Do we want everybody to go? Absolutely. Does God want everyone to go? Absolutely. How do I know? It says because that uh, hell was created for the devil and his crew. See, it wasn't created for, for people. You and I, Karen, were created to live forever. And I think really, please remind your Christian friends of this a lot of times because I see a lot of lost hope. I see a lot of people that are tore all to pieces on all these different things. And the problem is nobody understands that the deal is you're going to live forever if you're saved. And, and this is really gets me because as I said at the beginning of the program, Something has got to motivate me. Don't we all get motivated about every spring because we're getting ready to go on vacation? Or maybe we get motivated by the change of seasons or, or football season in the fall or maybe a little bit of snow as long as it's not too much in the winter. And then by the time we've had all of winter we can take, we look forward to spring coming. I mean, our life is spent looking forward to the next thing. We all want our kids to graduate from high school and go to college. We just don't want them to go too far from the house, do we, Ronnie? So there's where we're at. So by the fourth seal, a fourth of the population has, has died. The fifth seal is the, the martyrdom of the tribulation saints. Those people that get saved, okay, during the tribulation period, they're going to be killed. Why in the world would you want to wait and get saved during the tribulation period where they're going to probably chop your head off when you can get saved right now, talk to the Lord, and get out of this place? Let's all leave here together with the church and not be bothered with this craziness anymore. Right? So that's the fifth seal. The sixth seal brings natural disasters of various kinds. We're going to have earthquakes. We're going to have probably more of a universal hurricane versus just this hurricane that we're able to track on television, right? Uh, maybe some of these other storms and these floodings that we see. And once again, there won't be the resources to clean things up as they're cleaned up today. So what are you going to have? You're going to have stench. You're going to have pestilence. You're going to have just filth and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So, there it is, the six judgments, okay? By the six judgments, many of the unbelievers are going to wish they were dead. They were going to want to die. They're going to hide from God, but they're not going to get saved. They're going to get bitter, even more bitter toward God. Now, this is God's wrath too. God's pouring out his wrath on the earth. All this craziness is going on, okay? So we've got a little bit of a parenthesis here, if you will, because we're going to skip a little bit um, because chapter 7 is going to introduce the 144,000 sealed Jewish men who are going to go forward and preach 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. So that is going to be how the message goes out. Their eyes are open. Hey, Jesus was real. Jesus was the Messiah. Now you go forward and you tell people about um Jesus, okay? So then, once they're introduced, once their mission is introduced, and we start to see what they're going to do, then we go to chapter 8 in Revelation. Now, once again, this is Reader's Digest version. This is not in-depth. Just trying to get you in the mindset of you don't want to be left behind. It is not a... Uh, who was the kid that made the Cameron Burr or something like that? Cameron something that made the Left Behind movies. This is not going to be a movie. This is not going to be fun times. This is going to be when you wish you could die and you can't die. This is going to be where if you have kids, babies, that, that they may be used for food. And I hate to say that at 7 o'clock in the morning and hate to be so gross, but you got to be prepared. And when we're painting this picture to other people, we got to be realistic. We have got to share with people, folks, this is hell on earth. Don't be here for this. Okay. Now, chapter 8 is the 8th seal, okay? So, the 8th seal, some say, is going to contain the seven trumpets. 
So there's a silence here for a little bit of time. And then the trumpets start to, to break loose. As the trumpets start to happen, we've got fire and hail. Okay, we've got a third of the sea and a third of the fresh water turning to blood. Folks, if you've ever seen a creek cleaned out or something, and you've ever seen, you know, some fish die, son, there ain't nothing that smells like dead fish up on the side of a, a, a creek bank somewhere. So there's where we go, okay? So the third trumpet, all the fresh water becomes bitter. The fourth trumpet, a third of the light is gone. When the light is gone and, and the smell and, the, and all this other stuff, when that third of that light's gone, crops are even harder to grow, okay? So, the last three trumpets will be especially severe as announced by the threefold repetition of woe, woe, woe. And it's like, this is beyond, you know, what you're going to want to be into this thing for, okay? There's a five-month period uh, of torment on the unbelievers of the earth, so God, in our period that you and I are living in right now, Ronnie can tell you, he's a pastor, we're living in easy times. Man, just get to Jesus, tell him you're sorry, tell him you want to be a child of the king, and, and start learning this Bible. This here is turn loose on the unbelievers of the world, because God said, you won't love me because I love you. Maybe you'll love me because I'm going to beat you to death and put you in hell. Because that's about what we get here when he turns loose these locusts and all these things. But what happens with people? They get bitter and bitter and bitter. More bitter, I guess we should say. So how sad is that? These people are not interested. Man, we live in a society today when it just don't matter what happens to you, you don't see the sign that God's trying to get your attention. Folks. I guarantee you, God is trying to get your attention. And the reason for that is your time is short on this earth. And if you do not know that you're going to live forever, you're not. Now, if you'll go to John 14 and read first five or six verses, you can see that you can live forever. Don't wait. There's no promise of tomorrow. Okay, so the locust, the horses with with the, or the locust with the horse face. I mean, all these things that we can't even understand. Then we get down to the sixth trumpet and you're going to end up with the death of a third of the surviving people on this earth. Now, if my math is right and we lost a fourth of the total population when it was nine, right? That was about two billion people. And then it comes down to, that would leave us with about seven so then if I've got 7 billion people and a third of them die, you're looking at over 2 million again. So if I put 2 and 2 together and add a billion, about 5 billion of the 10 billion people that have lived on, that are, that are alive during this period of time are going to, to end up in hell. See? Because they're unbelievers and they're just not going to hear the things that Jesus wants them to hear. Now, <clears throat> what in the world is going on? Well, by, by chapter 10, the angel and the little book, okay? By this point in the tribulation period, you're in Revelation 9, verse 20 and 21. The unbelievers, okay, um, they've made up their mind. They're not coming to Jesus. They're cursing the Lord. You know, they're, it, it's going to be real easy for the devil, or the antichrist and the false prophet to come to them and say, look, let's get let's get on the same page and let's take God down for what he has done to you. So we're going to run over here now to Revelation chapter 12. And that's why I wanted to share this verse with you this morning. Um, it says, There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 jewels. Okay, once again... What in the world is all this? Okay, the woman is representing the country of Israel and her child is Jesus the Christ, right? So the woman is not the church, okay? Because the church is the country of Israel, or not the church, but, the, but Israel represented here by the woman means the whole country of Israel. The church is gone, okay? So think about that. So this persecution period of time that's coming Who's going to do that? Well, if I go to verse 3 here in Revelation chapter 3, 
or chapter 12, verse 3, here's what it says. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his horns. Okay? So, there's a wonder, an amazing sign. Okay? But here's the verse 4. I wish you'd almost circle Revelation 12, 4. Because you and I do not need to be messing with the devil. Not now and not ever. And here's why. Because... In, in Revelation 12, verse 4, it reads this way. The red dragon's tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and he did cast them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So a lot of scholars believe this third part of the stars are the fallen angels that followed Satan at the first time that Satan rebelled against the Lord, okay? When was that? It had to be before Adam and Eve um, because of what? Because Satan came with sin there in Genesis chapter three. But if you'll notice, he still hasn't, Satan has not surprised God. God knew it all, all along about how Satan would enter into the world. He knew the prideful and arrogance of Satan would get the best of him in, in the program that was going on there. So, now, I want you to think about this. These angels are created beings by God that have been in the presence of God. They've seen all of his marvelous works, everything he's ever done. And somewhere in the line, Satan is slick enough to talk them into following Satan. Folks, you don't need to be messing with Satan. I don't need to. Listen, we don't want the Ouija board out. We don't want the horoscope out. We don't want her palm red. We don't want to conjure up any kind of evil in our lives because we can't stand against it, okay? I mean, we are easy. He, he got uh, Adam and Eve, and Adam was smart enough to, to name every animal of the field, of the air, and of the ocean. He was not stupid. The second thing is Satan is so convinced of his own agenda that he goes to Jesus and tempts Jesus with bow down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. And and of course, Jesus is able to rebuke it with, get behind me, Satan, you don't know what you're talking about. But at the same time, it's in the Bible because Satan, they want you to see, the Bible wants you to see, God wants you to understand the power and the corruption that's in government and the kingdoms of the world because you better be careful not to get so involved in your politics and so involved in being your whatever position you might be in, whether it's elected or whatever, that you lose sight of Jesus is Jesus, and you can only win this thing if you're born again. You can't win heaven by being a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent or whatever you think is the way to heaven. Because John fourteen six says, Jesus, in his own words, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So don't get sidetracked by that. But I wanted you to get that. Um, that, um, you know, the fact that a third of the angels followed Satan. So what does that tell me today? Well, we know that several of the angels were so bad that God has chained them up and put them in the bottom of the Euphrates River. Is that symbolic? Possibly. You know, maybe some are already bound in hell. I don't know. But a third of the total angels ever created being evil and following Satan means there is a demonic force out there that is very real. And a lot of the problems that come from people trying to talk about Jesus, trying to get Jesus out there, they may come in the prettiest package, right? But at the end of the day, they are pure evil. We have a tendency to believe that we can mess with a little bit of sin and everything would be okay. And if we really understood just the the power of just allowing a little bit of sin into my life, man, we would just, we'd be on guard more, okay? I mean, just like King David, I say it over and over again. Here's a guy that probably broke all 10 commandments if he looks at Bathsheba on Sunday, on the Sabbath, I'm sorry. But how is it that he is a man after God's own heart? How is it he has promised his kingdom will never end and Jesus is, is an heir or a, a, a proof of that prophecy being born in the line of David. Because no matter where you're at today, you can come back to the Lord. That's very important. There's so many people out here to think, I can't come back to Jesus. I'm too embarrassed to come back to Jesus. 
man, you don't know what I did and the whole church found out and I can't go back to that church. Go to somebody else's church. Okay? Because there's one church and that's Jesus Christ. See, one mind, one accord is the church. It ain't a Catholic church and it's not a Methodist church and it's not a Southern Baptist, Free Will Baptist, uh, whatever. Okay? It has nothing to do with that. If you are saved and believe in Jesus Christ, you're in the church. And if you're going to a church and you don't feel comfortable or they know secrets about you, you know, you need to go somewhere else. Because if they can't forgive or you can't forgive yourself and you can't go on, you can't be where Jesus wants you to be if you don't get down the road and get in the right church. See? Because that's a big problem that a lot of people never grow to what Jesus wants us to be. Norman Pennington, so good to see you this morning. See, if I if I say I'm saved and I get saved, but I never progress and do the things Jesus wants me to do, what have I done? See, I could say, well, I'm gonna let somebody else tell people about Jesus. I don't see anybody else on here doing it, right? Even the big preachers on TV, you know, they they do some TV stuff, but I don't see any Facebook Live. I mean. I see some Sunday services out of churches. Ronnie's church does a good job of getting the message out. Our little church does a good job of getting the message out. But I mean, overall, day in and day out, why isn't somebody from every church putting something out every day? Because somebody's going to listen to that. Don't worry about how polished the message is. If Jesus gets a hold of the message, it's going to be okay. Right? So... All that I was trying to get to here, and it looks like we're going to have to get to it tomorrow, is going to start in Revelation 13, verse 11, where the chief religious figure of the world is going to step forward. Now, it's so funny to me in politics, when I was running for office, that people say, uh, the, the, the Constitution says separation of church and state. No, it don't say separation. It says you got to write to, to any kind of, you got to write to worship the way you choose, okay? If I'm a candidate and I choose to worship Jesus Christ, I have every right from freedom of speech to tell you about my Jesus. See, a lot of people really got that out of context, and that's why a lot of people who are saved won't even think about politics because they've all made mistakes somewhere along the line. If you all knew what a sinner I was and the mistakes that I've made, you probably wouldn't be on here, okay? Because why? Because we've all done it, you see? But the Christian out here today, we are made to feel like we're losing this battle and everything that's, that's going on in society today is written down in the Bible. The wars and the rumors of wars, that's going to be a seal somewhere down the line, but it's going on today to get our attention and say, man, Jesus said that in the Bible. Kids not caring anything about the parents. Parents not caring anything about the kids. Man, guess what? I read that. I read that in the Bible. So as we look around at all this tragedy and all this heartbreak that's going on out there, I mean, I don't know what you're looking at, but I can't see anything in the world that makes me think, boy, I sure want to sell, I sh I want to sell my birthright. I'm going to give up Jesus and chase anything that's in the world. I wouldn't do it for any career because I've seen people at all career levels get terminated. Somebody walk in just before retirement and let somebody go because they didn't want to pay the promised retirement or pension that they promised these people. Well, it's terrible, you know? And it goes on all the time. Um, you know, going into a job and they've paid you X amount of dollars all these years and now all of a sudden they say, well, you can stay, but now your pay is half of what it was. Well, who wants to do that? You see... I don't see anything in the world that's got my attention. Now, when I was young and I was out here chasing, you know, the American dream or whatever, I could look at these things and say, boy, there's something in that. But now I look at my house and I'm like, man, I really wish I had one of my little cabins. You know why? Because I wouldn't have a very big electric bill. I'd only have room for one TV, so I wouldn't be paying for a box in every room that there's a TV in, Right? And I don't really even need this big old huge refrigerator. I could probably get one, uh, buy with one about that size, right? But we've got more than we need, and we're not praising the Lord for what we do have. We're not realizing the signs of the time. that We think there's plenty of time until we go to the funeral home. 
and then we're heartbroken. Oh, why did so-and-so leave? Why did God let this happen? God told you. Your life is a vapor. God told you this is going to happen. God said there's going to be things you don't understand. Be ready, be ready, be ready, and let's go. And that's where we're at today. So I got to roll. But tomorrow, we're going to start right here in, in Revelation 13. We're going to see how this uh, false prophet becomes the world religious leader, okay? And, and, then, and then we're going to start to see how this all pulls together. You know, follow the Antichrist. Follow, you know, he's going to be saying, you know, follow the world, you know, one world rule. Follow the Antichrist. He has all the answers. <clears throat> so we, we'll learn more about that in the morning. All right, men, I, men and women, I got to get out of here. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope I didn't run through that too quickly. But it's important to know that Satan was able to, to trick a third of the angels into following him. It's important to know that half the world's population is going to die during this seven-year period. And once again, just thinking about the logic uh, or, or the logistics of it all, who's going to bury five billion people? What's the smell going to be like when a third of the water turns to blood? And then later, I think it, it, there's another blood, uh, you know, the rest of the water. I mean, God is slowly, sh quickly just strangling whoever's on this earth at that time with the wrath of God and they just continue to get more bitter and bitter and bitter. And, you know, there will be some people saved during this period of time, but not the majority. So let's not give up on people right now because you and I may be in the presence of the Lord today. So let's do our best to get these messages out there because, man, the truth is the truth. And that is, I don't care how old you are, you don't have much time left. You may see the grave before me. I may see the grave before you, but the grave is victory for us. And never forget that because, man, we got a bunch of people running around out here in society today telling you what great Christians they are, but you start talking about heaven, and I don't want to hear about that. I'm like, dude, you don't want to hear about a place where you're going to live forever with no more tears, no more sorrow, and no more pain? I mean, it's going to be the greatest thing ever, Myrtle. We're going to be there. And I'm going to be right there with Myrtle and Benita. They sing so good together. I'm going to get up there and sing a song with them too when I get to heaven. Because see, we'll all be able to sing a song the angels can't sing. I do have to roll. Have a wonderful Monday. If I can help you, let me know. Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful you wrote it all down and we have followed the road map and we're right there. We're ready to go to heaven. We'd love to see you come and take us out of here right now. We know it wouldn't be good for those family, friends, and enemies that are right on the fringe of responding to you. And that we just got to keep being Jesus, being like you in front of them so that they'll want what we have. That's all our goal is. That is our plan. And I hope and pray that we're able to do it because Lord, we love you. We thank you for saving us. And man, we just want to praise you because you saved us. And we're so heartbroken that we're going to deal with a period of time we won't be here but this tribulation period where people are bitter, where they're mad at you, where they're blaming you for everything, and the more wrath you turn loose on them in hopes that somebody would respond, the more that they turn their backs. What could you do? I'm so thankful, Lord, that you kept calling and kept giving us chances until we finally surrendered. Lord, our prayer list is be with each person here that's on our program because they have a prayer list on their heart. Please look at every prayer, answer according that thy will be done. We need to pray, Lord, for each other. Lord, also, we ask for you to be with our men and women in, this, uh, in the armed forces that are all over this world. What wonderful uh, men and women it takes to make that commitment and go. We ask for you to be with the Harvey Foster family. I can remember Harvey and, and Wanda back so many years ago. And, and Dwayne and Glenn, be with Dwayne and Glenn and all the grandkids. And there's just so much uh, in, in little towns like Milton, West Virginia. Um, when you think about all these people and all these things, that's so pretty awesome uh, when you go back and think about all of this. So, Lord, we, we're just praising you because we know we're going to be with you one day in heaven. And I ask for you to be with our veterans and their families. That's a group that'd be real easy they paid tremendous prices so many times to go and fight for our freedoms and to protect us around the world. 
And we're not really the best at taking care of these people, but Lord, I pray you'll open every door and help these families and these soldiers in every way because they've made the big sacrifices. And some even sacrificed their lives and their health. And Lord, we hope and pray you'll be with them. Our policemen, our firefighters, and our first responders, these men and women run right to the front lines of problems every single day across our country and across the world. Lord, we pray you'll keep them safe. I pray that the communities will respect these men and women, and we will always be wanting to promote them and help them in every possible way. Our school kids need prayer, and I'm sorry that sometimes I get on the negative of school when there's a lot of good stuff. There's a lots of amazing programs happening in school. And, and Lord, I, I'm, I'm not trying to get on them. I know that the top kids, they're always going to be the top kids. And the, the kids at the bottom, they're always going to be the bottom. But Lord, I'm concerned about those kids right in the middle. They can still win or they can still lose at this thing called life. And the number one thing is that would help the attitude of all of them is if we could just talk to them about Jesus. If you would help us, Lord, to get into those schools and talk to people just a little bit more about the fact that someone's always watching. And you may think you're getting away with something, kids, but you're really not. So let's pray for our kids. Let's pray for our teachers and our school personnel. There's just such a disconnect between the federal and the state and even the counties. You know, they know a little bit about what's going on, but these county officials Man, their hands are tied and they got so much craziness to deal with uh, that we need to break away from the federal government, but that's where the money comes from. And so we have to really be careful because sometimes when we do something for the money, there's a special title you get for that. And Lord, we're so sorry that we have become such a, such a simple people and being willing to sell out for the cash on so many different ways. Lord, our nursing homes, our hospitals, the nurses in general, we need a bunch of new nurses. And I know they're in training and they're trying. And we've had a lot walk away and a lot retire since COVID. And we really need the medical community to ramp up the nursing production. Folks, if anybody's listening here and anybody ever thought about a good paying job, and I believe it's a mission field. I hope and pray that they would find uh, or or maybe do a little research and find out this is a great profession to be in. Lord, again, forgive us where we fail you. Bless those that are on here with us at 7 a.m. Let's share this message out there because somebody's going to be last. And when that last person gets saved, I know, Lord, you're going to take us out of here. So help us to be and do what you want us to do. But one day, Lord, we rejoice and we praise you because we know we'll be face to face with you. And we will spend eternity in a place with no more tears, no more sorrow, and no more pain. Lead, direct, and guide our lives, and we will not fail to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, folks. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. Myrtle, quit bragging on me. My head's already big enough, man. I just I just feel getting bigger all the time. <laughs> all right. Let's go do something productive for the Lord. TG, have a good day. Guys, we'll all see you here real soon. Have a great day. We'll try to be on here tomorrow, and we will go with the false prophet, the religious ruler of the world that uh, keeps saying, follow this Antichrist, follow this guy, follow this guy. That's tomorrow. We'll see you.